Hey guys, California Ant Keeper here again. I wanted to do a little review on the Fortress from Tar Heel Ants. You know, I've seen a couple of reviews on here, but I wanted to, to do one that's after some heavy use. Because this one I've had for about a year and a half, and it's had about four colonies in it. Alright, so after a year and a half, how is this Fortress holding up? It's holding up pretty good. It's still doing the job it needs to do. So you can see there's a couple stains still in there that I couldn't really get. I just cleaned it out. So same with the glass. It's got some stains on it. I don't really want to clean it with chemicals or anything that could hurt the ant. So I just scrubbed it with hot water. Same thing with the inside of this. A lot of people like to use peroxide. I just didn't have any on hand so I didn't try it. Just some hot water and a toothbrush. You can see the outworld too. Okay, now one of the things that didn't hold up was the glue that holds down the bottom to this. And I've tried a couple different things, but nothing seems to hold on for quite that long. So if you guys have any suggestions, have ran into this problem, something how to fix it, let me know. So the fortress comes with these accessories. comes with the water tube feeder. Put water in. I usually put it in the top right here, like so. Fill this full of water first comes with this black plug I put in the back like so and it also comes with one of these little plastic adapters personally I'm not a fan of these plastic adapters I've accidentally bumped them and they they've fallen right out I mean they do what they're supposed to do but I know that's a user error but I've I use these sometimes so I take a little piece of hose, put just a little bit of hot glue gun, push it in. Also do this because my colonies get invaded by wild colonies. And when I use these, sometimes the wild colonies can sneak around the cracks, even though they're not really cracks. They can sneak in on little, the tiniest little spot right there. So when I use these, I don't have a problem with that, so I tend to do that. Now with this back area, this is where I move my ants in. So I pull the plug out, I made a little adapter, and it slides right in. So and if I take this off, I can attach it right into a mini hearth. Just like so. Here we got some Pogonomer Mix Californicus in the fortress. Just moved them in a couple days ago. They're doing really good. So I wouldn't move a colony into here that was any smaller than this. If you do that, you're going to have problems. This is my newest fortress right here. This one's a little different. This one has some very deep chambers in the back. They go way back there. So if you have a bigger colony or a colony that really goes fast, I really would recommend these deep chambers. And it's perfect for these ants because at every stage of the larva cycle, you can see they put the eggs and broods in different chambers depending on where they're at in their cycle. So if you put a colony that's too small into one of these, you're going to run into mold issues. You're going to run into them putting food in the chambers. You might also run into an issue where it just completely slows down the growth of the colony. So I've put smaller colonies into these before and it seems like they just stop growing for like a month. Looks like the queen up in there. The way I heat these nests, I run a cable underneath touching the bottom. You can see it running underneath. It's running underneath that one as well. So the heat cable is set to 79 degrees. If it goes above 79 degrees in here, then it shuts off. It's currently 67, so it's heating right now. All right, so overall, the Fortress Type 3 is a very great formicarium, and I'll be buying more in the future. So currently, I have three of them right now. Again, this one was used for a year and a half and had about four colonies in it total, and they all thrived.
So when I moved my Campanatus in here, they weren't doing very well. They were in a acrylic nest. And when I moved them into here, they, they thrived after that. So I'll be moving some Vero Messer Andre into this one later today. So I'll, I'll include that footage at the end. But this Formicarium goes for about $75. And honestly, you can't go wrong with Tar Heel Ants. If you're a beginner keeper, please try Tar Heel Ants. It will make your life so much easier trying to guess what these guys need. So it's a lot more forgiving putting your ants in here when you've you've never kept ants before. So if your colony is small, I always start with the mini hearth and then go to the fortress. That's the way I do it. Some other people might prefer other Tar Heel ants formicariums over the fortress, but it's it's always worked for me. Alright, thanks guys.